I spent a bunch of time experimenting with complex RGB toggles in Live 2D so that you don't have to. Hi, I'm Moon. I've got another VTuber tutorial for you today, this time aimed at Live 2D riggers that want to create interesting effects on light up elements of a model, from a basic rainbow animation to a toggle that lets you switch the lights from off to on, or even a pulse mode that reacts to music or voice. Normally, I keep these pretty short and sweet, but today I'm going to fully walk you through my process so you can follow along step by step as you rig. And hopefully, it can also be a resource for folks learning Live 2D that haven't had a lot of experience with multiple keys editing, which is something that can really simplify the process for a lot of color or transparency based toggle rigging. But without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Starting with the art itself, you only need two layers for this effect a top layer that is solid and should be a very light color or even white would work, and then duplicate that layer, blur it, and make it a darker and highly saturated color, whatever you want your default light color to be essentially. This should give it a nice glowing effect. Technically, you could merge these two together and it would still work, but I recommend keeping the layers separate for more rigging flexibility. The first step is just making a deformer that we will apply all of these effects to so that we don't have to do it multiple times for each layer. Now if you have different parts of the model where you want some of it to react to music or turn off, while other parts stay on all the time, you'll want to put those in separate deformers and do their RGB effects separately. I had tried using different variations of nested deformers like putting the pulse one inside of the static one or vice versa. but it always made some kind of complication, so stick to keeping them separate. I have the eyeball here in a deformer that I'm calling RGB static because I want it to stay on all the time. And these edge lights, I'm putting in one called RGB pulse because I do want them to react to music. Then we have some parameters to set up. First, we need one called RGB toggle with a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. This is just to switch your default color to RGB. Next is RGB color with a minimum of zero and a maximum of eight. Then check on the repeat effect, which you might have to hit edit parameter to do because I don't think the checkbox is there when you're making a brand new one. Uh, then to RGB mode with a minimum of negative one and a max of one. This will toggle whether the lights are on, pulsing or off. And finally RGB pulse, which should have a minimum of zero and a max of one which creates the pulsing effect, and that's what we'll set up in VTube Studio to react to sound. This is the order that we'll rig these effects in to do it the most simple and efficient way possible. Start by selecting your deformer you just made and create a key on each end of the RGB toggle parameter. Then set the parameter to one and go down to the inspector tool where you'll find multiply and screen colors. Click on the multiply color and pick a more intense saturated color than your default color. Mine is closest to purple by default, so I'm going to start there on the color wheel. Do the same thing for screen, but slide it down a little darker so that the light doesn't look washed out or overexposed. For more visual interest, you can even shift the hue a little bit. To me, it makes it look a little more neon to turn it a little cooler tone. Now that you've set your first color, we're going to add a key on each end of the RGB color parameter. Just hit OK on this pop up. And now we're going to work our way through the color wheel by setting additional keys along this repeating parameter. So now we're going to go to one on the RGB color parameter, set a key, then slide the multiply color towards pink and do the same for the screen. Some colors look better darker, especially blue and red, which that intense red is what we're going to do for our keyframe for number two. Then just repeat this as you go down the line. Three is orange, four is yellow, five is green, Six is teal or cyan or whatever, Hatsune Miku color. Seven is true blue, and then it circles all the way back naturally to purple again at eight. Just eyeball adjustments for each color until they look right. Depending on the base art your model has, your hex codes might be very different from mine. Now that was all for my eyeball on Luna, which is my TTS bot that I'm rigging right now, and I want that to always be on, so I'm repeating everything I just did on my edge lights, which I do want to pulse, so they're going to be in a different deformer. Once you know your colors, you can just copy and paste the hex codes from multiply and screen on that first deformer that you did over to this second one, and so on and so forth, so that all the lights match up on every part of your model. So now we have a nice seamless rainbow loop. This is where the rigging splits. If you just wanted a rainbow RGB effect with no pulsing or on and off toggle, you can skip ahead to the idle animation portion. The rest of this rigging is for the on off toggles and the pulsing effect. 
With the pulse deformer selected, set three keys on the RGB mode parameter and two keys on the RGB pulse parameter. Hit OK on this pop-up warning. It's just mad that we're creating something with so many parameters, but what Live2D doesn't know is we're gonna be using multiple keys editing here to make it very, very simple. So up in your top bar, go to Modeling, Parameter, Multiple Keys Editing. You'll get a window that will allow you to change opacity, draw order, and color across several different parameters at once. For this first one, I want negative one on RGB mode to turn lights off entirely. You can either use my method of turning the layer black if you want this to be a physical LED light that casts a shadow when it's not on, or you could set the opacity to zero for more magical effects. Things that are floating around the model, like a halo or a holographic projection, you'll want to use transparency instead. First, you'll want to deselect the zero and one key of RGB mode and set the multiply and screen layers to black, then hit OK. Now when we have RGB mode set to negative one, the lights are turned off regardless of the settings of any of those other parameters. Next, we're going back into multiple keys editing, deselecting the negative one and one on RGB mode, deselect one on RGB pulse, change multiply and screen to black again, and of course you could do opacity zero as I mentioned earlier instead. Now when RGB mode is set to zero, the lights pulse, when set to one, it doesn't pulse and stays on, and set to negative one, it doesn't pulse and stays off. And that's it for model rigging. Now we'll choose animation from this dropdown to create an idle effect that cycles through those rainbow colors. Under project in the upper left, click and drag the model name down onto the timeline and pay no mind to the size of the model on the canvas. It doesn't have any impact on what we're doing here. If you have any other idle animations such as crying, you'll wanna add this to your existing one. Otherwise, if this is a brand new idol, click on scene, rename it to whatever you want. I'm calling this rainbow idol. Then change the duration to your length of choice. Shorter will cycle very rapidly through. Longer will be slow and calm. I personally use four seconds. Regardless, once you've set your length, you'll want to drag the duration of the model here to match. Next, we need to go into live 2D parameters. To be able to see what you're doing, you're gonna need to keyframe the RGB toggle to on by setting it at one. Just make sure you delete this hotkey before exporting the motion or your rainbow lights will be on all the time. Go down to your RGB color, set a hotkey at the beginning of the timeline to zero and at the end of the timeline to eight. Then hit play to see how it looks. This is where having the repeating parameter is so helpful because instead of going up to eight and then reversing down to zero, your loop will always move forward. The four second length here works for me because I like a fast paced cycle. I use this rainbow toggle for alerts like new subs or when raids come in. So I do want it to be very noticeable, but not so aggressive that it hurts anyone with photo sensitivity. Now that we're happy with our loop, we can delete that RGB toggle keyframe. When you hit play, even though the rainbow is still cycling, you won't see it and that's good. You don't want to see your rainbows unless you toggle it on with a hotkey in VTube Studio. Now go to File, Export for Runtime, Export Motion File. The default here should all be fine and save it to the same folder as your model. Also save the animation file itself in case you wanna make changes to this in the future. And that's it for Live2D. Let's head to VTube Studio and set this all up. So if you want the model to react to music or voice, first we need to set up the input that the pulse parameter will react to. Go into settings, scroll down until you see microphone settings and turn that on. By default, it will be using your mic, which should make it voice reactive. If you want it to react to music instead, there's a catch. You will have to have your audio separated so that your music is on its own audio input, either using hardware such as GoXLR or software like voice meter and a virtual audio cable. I personally already had my audio separated so that I could play music on stream without getting DMCA'd. You can learn more about that in my karaoke tutorial. Basically, VTube Studio only recognizes audio inputs like microphones, so you need to trick your PC into thinking your music is coming through a mic. Now, for the settings here, you'll need to do some testing with your setup to figure out how to get a good reaction based off how loud your microphone or your music is. Frequency only matters if you have a parameter that's going to react to it, which I don't have for this example, so for now you'll only need to mess with the volume settings. Next, we'll head over to our model parameters and create one for the sound reaction. Set the input to voice volume and turn on limit range, and output will be RGB pulse. 
Smoothing is fine at 20, then set the in to 0.01 at the top and leave it at zero at the bottom. Feel free to adjust these to your liking though. This is just what worked best for me and my setup. Now, if you don't want it to be sound reactive, but you still want it to pulse somehow, you could just toggle on auto breathing here, which makes for a nice subtle effect. Next, we need to set up our expressions and hotkeys, starting with the modes. Create an expression called lights off, toggle on RGB mode set to negative one, then for pulse, the same thing, but set RGB mode to zero, and for lights on, set RGB mode to one. Create hotkeys for each one of those, and now we can turn the lights off, pulsing, or on. Next, let's work on the rainbow toggle. You'll need to pop over to your idle animation setting, set the rainbow idle, and then we'll go set up the expression. In this expression, you'll set the RGB toggle to one, create a hotkey for it, and now you can turn the RGB animation on and off. Your previous pulse hotkeys should still work even when the rainbow is toggled on. Next, we can make hotkeys for any specific colors we might want to toggle on. Create a new expression for the color, set RGB toggle to one and RGB color to whatever you want along that spectrum. Then create a hotkey for this as well. I went ahead and made hotkeys for each of the main colors I keyed when rigging so that I can easily change them on the fly. And that's it. That's my reactive RGB rigging and setup process. It sounds complex, but honestly, once you learn how to do it, it's one of the easiest and quickest effects you can add to a model to really elevate the quality of it. And it's a toggle that your clients will actually use. From setting up hotkeys that trigger a rainbow effect when a raid comes in, to hosting visually engaging karaoke streams with music reactive lights. In fact, you can find all of these things on my Twitch channel, where I stream multiple times a week, including art and rigging streams where you can hang out while I work on models and share more of my process with chat. Be sure to click that link in the description and drop me a follow on Twitch. I'd love for you to stop by and see these RGBs in action sometime. And if you like this tutorial, check out some of my other tutorials in the playlist in the description and subscribe so you don't miss when the new ones drop. That's all I got y'all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one.